I had the honor of working with Alan on Sense and Sensibility. At the time, my English was very limited, and I was intimidated by the actors, especially by Alan, who was such a great fan of Jane Austen, so knowledgeable about English literature. I could only give awkward and rather minimal directions. Alan accepted those with patience and good humor. He was able to deliver a truly poignant and heartbreaking performance as Colonel Brandon. I will always remember him as a great actor and a true English gentleman, Ang Lee. Um, Ang, <laughs> Ang's English wasn't so bad, but we had just made a film in Taiwan before that. And in Taiwan, at lunchtime on the set, uh, in order to approach uh, the director, first off, you never said Ang. You always said, Mr. Director. And the other thing was, well, I remember the first day of shooting, Ang and I got our lunches, and we sat down on the bench, and we were eating lunch, and then there was nobody sitting near, anywhere near us. And I said, Ang, what is it? Everybody hates you? I mean, I don't know, maybe you've been a jerk uh, during pre-production. And he said, oh my God, I forgot to invite them to sit with me, so nobody would approach. Then we start Sense and Sensibility and rehearsals. And shall we say, there was a lot of discussion about the text and about the world and about this and about that. And Alan had this question and that question. And I'll never forget one day, uh, I, Aang called me back to the trailer. He just had a very intense rehearsal. Um, and, he, and he looked at me and he said, you know, James, I used to be the emperor and now I'm just the president. <laughs> it took him a while to get used to it, and then he just fell in love with everybody on this set, and it was really Emma's spirit through the script and through her presence that made the making of Sensibility, Sense and Sensibility one of the most magical experiences of our lives. Certainly there was a day on set when Alan, in a beautiful scene, when he finally re-arrives to um, give an invitation to uh, a Kate Winslet um, and he gets off this horse. You'll see the scene tonight, and I just need you to remember this as you're watching it, that when you see him get off the horse, that's actually take seven or eight, because up until then, every time Alan Rickman got off the horse and approached, and he said, I've come to issue an invitation, every single time, the horse would fart. <laughs> and I have never seen Alan Rickman break character. I've never seen him for one minute step outside of the most professional demeanor, and we got him on that one. He just couldn't handle it. It was insane. Um, with that, I guess I'm handing uh, the mic to Emma with just one more personal statement. I wasn't here 20 years ago for this film. I wanted to be here, but um, it screened the day of my second daughter's birth. And so it really means a lot to share this film with you 20 years later uh, in Alan Rickman's memory. He's really part of my, my family life, my history. Uh, he's totally ingrained. And one last thing, uh, if you haven't seen or read his work uh, that he created for the stage, in the words of Rachel Corey, a young woman who was killed uh, in the service of humanity that Alan always had and always proposed to others to share, please do so. He was not simply a great actor, he was a great human being who fought for justice every second of his creative and political and personal life. Emma. for coming to honour our friend. Um, I was going to just tell you a little story because um, I saw a lot of him before he died and uh, today a journalist said to me, so what's your favourite moment with Alan? And it was some years ago at my house. We were having um, a Christmas Eve dinner and there were lots of people there. And there was mistletoe. I don't know whether you hang mistletoe in your country. You know, the plant and you kiss underneath it. Yes? Mistletoe. 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 It's the same word. Okay. You're all looking blank. You're all just staring at me as though I've grown an extra head. Mistletoe. It's a plant. You kiss underneath it. Okay? That's all you need to know. Anyway, I'm standing underneath the, the mistletoe in a sort of hopeful way. You know, it's Christmas Eve, I'm in my house, I think maybe someone will come and kiss me. And Alan approaches from the sitting room with a glass in his hand. He's looking gorgeous, he's a very good looking man. I'm standing there, I think, oh, he's good, come and kiss me. I pucker, I don't close my eyes quite because I want to see, I want to feel the whole moment. He comes towards me, 
And then his eyes narrow, he leans in, I think it's happening, it's happening, he's gonna kiss me. And then he reached down to my chin and pulled a long hair <laughs> out of my face. <laughs> Looked at it and he said, you know, I think that's an incipient beard. <laughs> walked off, never got a kiss. You didn't know whether he was gonna kiss you or upset you. That was the point. There's a scene in this film where I'm sitting with Hugh Grant and we're talking about his character because you must remember that when we made this movie, Alan was very well known for playing villains. And um, Eleanor uh, replies to Hugh. Hugh's question is, you know, he says, Colin Brandon, which is the name of Alan's character in this film, he must be a very nice man, he must be a very good man. And Eleanor says, yes, he's the kindest and best of men. And that's the best description I can give of my friend, Alan Rickman. Thank you for coming to honour his memory. He was a wonderful man and a wonderful friend and an extraordinary human being. And I hope you enjoy the film. Thank you very much for coming. Emma Thompson, James Seamus and Peter Crawford. And I wish you a wonderful, romantic enjoyment for all lovers. Enjoy.